Making a 2D character controller is a fundamental and crucial mechanic if we want to create a 2D game. This controller allows us to move our player in response to user input. Therefore, in today's session, we're going to create a simple character movement system that allows characters to move and jump. I'm using a free asset from the asset store here, I'll put the link in the description. We have a simple scene set up here with a single character holding a sword. Let's first add a box collider 2D to our character and adjust its size to fit our character. And also add a rigid body 2D for physics. Now, if we press play, you'll notice that our character is falling through the ground because there isn't a collider attached to the ground. Let's fix this first by attaching a box collider 2D to our ground as well. Press play once more. As you can see, our player is now standing on ground. The scene and character setup is finished now. Let's begin our scripting. First create a script and give it a name as player controller. Attach it to our player and open it up. Now to add movement forces to the player, we need a reference of our player's rigid body component. Let's create a rigid body 2D variable. To get horizontal input for our player's movement, let's first create a float variable. And then inside our update method get the horizontal input value in that variable. Minus 1 and 1 represent our input for left and right directions, respectively. Create a new float variable for player movement speed. Now let's change the horizontal velocity of our player's rigid body. Here we only want to affect the horizontal axis, so let's multiply our speed with input x and set it as x velocity of our player. And because we don't want to affect vertical velocity here, keep it as it is. Then go back to Unity. Drag the player's rigid body to the empty field. We can change movement speed from here to get suitable result. Press play. All right, we can now move our player successfully. To ensure smooth movement, go to the rigid body 2D component and choose the interpolate mode to interpolate. Let's go back to our script. Let's add some code to turn our player in a moving direction. Let's make a function to handle our player's flip and call it in the update method. Let's see how we plan to proceed. Since our input typically returns minus one or one, depending on which input button we press, if input X is less than zero, we are moving to the left. The same goes if our input X is greater than zero, which indicates that we are moving to the right. So depending on input X, we can rotate our player. Here, let's rotate our player from Y axis based on input X. Let's check it in Unity. All right, it is now working fine. As you can see, we've completed the horizontal movement. Let's now add some jumping mechanics. Let's create a float variable to control the jump force and add that force as vertical velocity if we press the spacebar. We can see that the jump function is properly working But if I repeatedly press the jump button while I am not on the ground, it adds force to it. Let's fix this problem. To determine whether the player is on the ground before jumping, create the boolean variable is on ground, a transform variable as ground checker and a layer mask as ground mask. Now let's look at how we're going to do this. First, we cast a sphere from our ground checker position and determine whether it touches our ground or not. If it does, we can jump. If not, we should avoid from doing so. Now, let's do it using code. In overlap circle, we need the three parameters. Position, radius, and layer mask of the collider from which we want to check collision. Let's draw a wired sphere around our circle so that it can be seen in scene view. Let's go back to Unity now. 
make an empty game object inside the player and put at the bottom, and then send it to the ground checker field in our script. As you can see, a circle gizmo is visible in scene view, and its radius can be adjusted from the inspector. Let's return to the script now. I accidentally placed the jump code in the flip function. To correct this, first exit the flip method and insert the jump code in the update method. Let's add a check to see if we are on the ground inside this if block, then save. Then return to Unity. Choose our ground object first. Click on a layer, add a new one as ground, then set ground as its layer. Select our player next, then in our script, choose layer mask as ground. Let's hit play. Now our jumping is working fine. Oh no, there's another issue. Our player is rotating. In order to prevent that, let's move to our rigid body. Inside constraints, check the freeze rotation option, then press play once more. To avoid this sticky behavior, create a physics 2D material Set its friction to zero and drag it to rigid body's material field. Yup, now we are done with our 2D character controller. In our next video, we will see how we can implement this crouching system in Unity. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments section and I will respond. If you enjoy our videos, please subscribe to our channel for more excellent content like this, and please tell your friends about it as well. I appreciate that you are watching this until end, have a good day! See you in the next video!